Uh, tonight's a night of thanks and to Gerald Marsh, who was my pastoral ministry professor. I stayed awake most of the time because uh, I commuted from Richardson to Fort Worth, my entire uh, seminary, uh, and it was 52 miles one way. So we'd get up early and dry, and then I'd have to sit through the classes and I loved your stories and all, but, and I think most of the time, I think, again, I, I stayed awake. But, you know, I am grateful that we have you to show us how to finish well, how to encourage those behind you, and to be an example that we all can say, hey, when I, I'm, I'm there, I want to be him. And we thank you, Dr. Marsh, so much for, for what you've done. And I want to thank uh, Jim uh, and the uh, where's the other Jim? Jim, Jim, stand up. Uh, Spivey, stand up. Browning, when Jim said, no, stand up. You, I know you don't like to do that. Huh? Uh, I, when Jim, I, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Uh, when uh, Jim and Bud came to me and talked about chaplaincy, I thought, oh, you know, that'd be a great department to add and, we'll, you know, it'd be a great way. And then I began to understand a bit about your vision and your dream. And I remember one day Jim came to me and said, look, I'm about to retire and I've got just the guy. And I had no clue who Jim Browning was. He said, he's down in San Antonio. And uh, Jim said, he's, he needs to be the guy. And so together they have, and you know, like I do, very few people get to envision something and then see it become a reality in their life their lifetime and for it to grow under the Lord's leadership and blessing and Jim and Jim you have done that and so I want to say thank you to both of you tonight. We do. We do. We do. let me tell you real briefly why I'm an advocate for chaplaincy uh, last uh, as Jim said I'm a volunteer police and fire chaplain in my hometown last holiday was a very tough one for me because I was on call for on Thanksgiving Day, and uh, that was because maybe like you, your kids come one one holiday and the other, and it was just my wife and me, and we'd had uh, dinner with her, her family. So I got a call to go, about 1930, I remember the, the time, and went to a family's house. And I knew it was gonna be pretty serious because there were three uh, 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 cruisers there. The CSI van was already there, I recognized the detectives a car and I went in and got the story and it was that the family had gathered for Thanksgiving meal at grandmother's house and uh, her son and daughter and son who was living with them upstairs uh, the, the table was set the grandchildren were there and uh, they'd gone up to get uncle and uh, he the door was locked and when they found him he had overdosed and um, on, on heroin that, that, that day. And had probably been up there most of the day. So I walk into this, you've walked into some of those before, and here are four children under 12 sitting waiting for grandmother's Thanksgiving to start. So if this was a training <laughs> time, I'd ask you to turn to each other at your table and say, what, what do you say? What do you do? And Nobody taught us how to do that or what to do there. And I thought suddenly that I wish I had more knowledge. I wish I had more training. And that night, before it was all said and done, of course, narcotics had to get involved. The ME uh, had to come. And it was one of those four, four and a half hour uh, times that you're with the family. And as the, the body leaves, had an opportunity to gather the family and, and pray together. And in that evening, uh, and Jim gave me the, the, uh, the title of pastor, missionary, and chaplain, the, in that evening, I was all three of those. A chaplain who served uh, in the community, with the community, the, a missionary who was on foreign soil uh, to serve, and a pastor who could uh, comfort during that time. New Year, Christmas Eve Eve, I was on call again and uh, got a call and called in to a home that looked like all the other homes in our area. 
and a mother who had been promised a paycheck and the family was waiting on that paycheck to buy gifts for the children and that paycheck didn't come and this was the 23rd of December and that that evening her husband worked night shift uh, that evening she took her life in in the garage so that when he came home in the morning he would see her and then the children would wake up and he would be able to protect them I guess you've been through those situations before and as I walked into that home and there was a 13 year old girl and a nine year old boy one day before Christmas Eve I asked myself what do you say what do you do and that's why I'm an advocate for t chaplaincy you have an opportunity to be invited into situations that pastors will not be that uh, uh, missionaries may not be but you will be and that's why I'm committed to the Marsh Center that's why B.H. Carroll will do all that we can do to support you in your ministry uh, the Texas Baptist Re Chaplaincy Relations Virginia uh, wherever there is a need uh, I commit to you to support what we're doing because I believe with all my heart that chaplains are as Dr. Marsh said in our changing culture you are the new pastors now the church is still plan A don't get me wrong uh, but people will come to you before they'll come to me uh, as a pastor and so I thank those of you who have been in this on the front lines for so long wherever God has placed you and I pray that together we can truly be the salt and light the presence of Christ where all he has placed us so you have my support, you have my prayers, and BH Care will be there for you as we move forward together. Thank you.